third thing that you want to be thinking about is your approach to performance oversight. So despite having regular uh, virtual communication, interpersonal interaction is always tends to be lacking when you are managing teams virtually. And you can get the idea that somebody's working hard and, and without actually knowing whether or not it is true because you can't observe and recognize situational challenges. Maybe you might not even have visibility into their actual contributions. You're aware of their outcomes, but maybe, maybe not their process, right? Um, and so someone may actually be working less virtually than they were in the office, but it can make it seem to you that they're working long and hard, okay? So having word of mouth commitments and individual task assignments don't keep everyone either connected to the big picture. So thinking about how are you going to manage and have oversight uh, into the performance of your employees. And, and that in oversight is that, again, that visibility into what it is that there is actually doing. So think about using a team dashboard to clarify and track commitments, um, getting the team to identify uh, intermediate milestones so that, again, everybody's working towards, you know, sh in shorter chunks as opposed to longer term projects. Also thinking about from a workload perspective, anticipating where you might see reductions in workload. Are there projects you can give them? Are there other things that can be working on? Can they be doing some upskilling? You know, how are they to use that time or that capacity? Or are you simply saying, you know, that as long as you get these done, then if it only takes you four hours a day, it only takes you four hours a day. So being really clear about that. And again, if that's the case, are they still available and accessible to you throughout the day? So those, those more clarity, more direction that we want to see. Okay. Make sure too that there is, you know, again, it's, uh, a lot of people will say, well, that's my, me micromanaging, and, and it's not, in fact. It's, it's a visibility into what is actually going on, what is being done, and, and so that you have awareness. And again, it may be okay, but then you want to communicate to that, and you want to make sure that your employees understand from a performance perspective what it is during this time that they are expected to do, what is non-negotiable, and, and what is it that, that, that they have a little bit of flexibility around as well, right? Because they are, again, in some cases, they are balancing some of their own personal challenges in addition to suddenly finding them working virtually. Some employees really, really struggle to maintain productivity while they're working from home. Um, others end up working longer hours and not taking breaks and and sort of not sort of organizing around any sort of structure so helping them with boundaries may be also the other thing that you're doing from a performance perspective and the last one i want to talk about is around permissive leadership um, when we a lot of us as leaders have a tendency towards um you know leading in a more permissive way in which case the employees get you know, are, are exercising more authority sometimes than we are, that we're not being really directive and really explicit about expectations. Um, and it allows the employees, you know, we, we're focusing on more being, you know, collaborative and allowing employees to make their decisions and to, you know, work to the beat of their own drum, so to say, as opposed to working to ours. And with permissive leadership, we don't define in direct performance. And that's more of an emotionally driven, self-protective approach to leading because we're not comfortable exercising our authority and one of the things that you want to be doing absolutely as you're managing your teams virtually is by looking at w where and how you are leading and where and how you are being directive and definitive okay so not just saying well you figure it out you let me know what you've decided or you know can you help me out with this it's being having a much clearer framework in which everybody is working and everybody is performing okay um, and and that really is not allowing and tolerating bad behavior, not allowing and tolerating um, the uh, to take on, not not taking responsibility for their feelings, not excusing bad uh, performance, because all that does is create even more chaos for you. This is a time where we really want to be uh, more effective as leaders, right? And that's so so important. It's very easy for us to say, "Well, I'm not going to say anything to them. They don't normally behave like this. This is probably just because of everything that's going on." But again, if we do that, because th we could be in this for an extended period of time, but all also, one of the things we don't want to do is allow them to create bad habits or to continue bad habits because we're just going to be cleaning them up when we get back to work. And that's a time where we really want to just be focused on recovery. And, and this is a great time to kind of have some of those conversations. It is an opportunity for us as leaders to introduce new boundaries, new rules, new expectations for our staff um, and to clean up any performance. Um, 
behavioral or performance issues that our team may be demonstrating.